How was your Thanksgiving? Uh, it was good. How was yours? I didn't cook, but I ate a lot. Do you even cook? You know, I used to cook. I'll be honest with you. I, I don't fake it, though. It's been 10 years since I, <laughs> <laughs> since I made anything other than an omelet. President Barack Obama's new book, A Promised Land, details his private thoughts from inside the White House. And today, he's here on Good Luck America to talk about it. President Obama, thanks for joining us on Good Luck America. It's good to see you again. One thing I was thinking about when I was reading the book, the 2008 campaign was the first presidential campaign that I covered. I was covering the other team. <laughs> yeah. One problem you didn't have that it feels like Joe Biden kind of has today, the young left was with you. You were the cool anti-war guy. You know, you could, you know, brush your dirt off your shoulders like Jay-Z. But today, you know, if you're 22 years old and you've gone through economic difficulty, you've got two wars, there's racism all around us. Socialism is cool. Bernie, AOC, they're cool. The Democratic Party isn't really cool. <laughs> what's the message, what's the pro-capitalist message, frankly, that Democrats can offer to young people? Socialism is still a loaded term for a lot of folks. Once again, instead of talking labels and ideology, we should focus on talking about getting certain things done. Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders both agree about raising the minimum wage. Nobody really cares about the label. They care that that is something that is important to a lot of young people and a lot of older people alike. Joe Biden and AOC think we should do something about climate change. What are the concrete steps that we can actually take to get that done? My advice for the Democratic Party is telling a story because People, young people, folks my age, people generally don't listen to a bunch of policy analysis. And I've been guilty of this sometimes. You know, people have said, oh, Obama gets too professorial sometimes and he's giving people a bunch of data points and everybody's you know, eyes glaze over. But they do remember a story that I tell. You know, let's unify the country. There is not a liberal America and a conservative America. There is the United States of America. Or here's how I understand race based on my relationship within my own family that has people of different races. That's what folks can relate to. If you want to move people, they are moved by stories that connect with their own lives. They're not moved by ideology. Now, one thing I will say about the Democratic Party, promoting young people is really important. We stick so long with the same old folks and don't make room for new voices. You know, the Democratic National Convention I thought was really successful considering the pandemic, but you know, the fact that an AOC only got, what, three minutes or five minutes? Good evening, bienvenidos, and thank you. When, you know, she speaks to a broad section of young people who are interested in what she has to say, even if they don't agree with everything she says, new blood's always good. And I, I say that as somebody who uh, used to be the young, shiny, cool guy, but uh, <laughs> now is the gray-haired old grizzled vet. Yeah, the gray is pretty rad. <laughs> when you were a community organizer, a lot of the folks in the community you were dealing with really just cared about modest change. They wanted to do better for their families. Again, if you're a young activist today and you believe really passionately in a slogan like defund the police, what is your advice to that activist also knowing that a lot of politicians won't go near that phrase. It, it's interesting. We take for granted, if you want people to buy your sneakers, that you're going to market it to your audience. If a musician drops a record, there, there's going to try to reach certain audiences speaking to folks where they are. It's no different in terms of ideas. If you believe, as, as I do, that we should be able to reform the criminal justice system so that it's not biased and treats everybody fairly. I guess you can use a snappy slogan like defund the police, but you know you've lost a big audience the minute you say it, which makes it a lot less likely that you're actually going to get the changes you want done. But if you instead say, let's reform the police department so that everybody's being treated fairly, you know, divert young people from getting into crime. And if there's a homeless guy, can maybe we send a mental health worker there instead of an armed unit that could end up resulting in a tragedy? Suddenly, a whole bunch of folks who might not otherwise listen to you are listening to you. So the key is deciding, do you want to actually get something done or do you want to feel good among the people you already agree with? And if you want to get something done in a democracy, in a country as big and diverse as ours, then you, you've got to be able to meet people where they are and play a, a game of addition and not subtraction. Come back tomorrow for more of our interview with Barack Obama.